Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. If you're a first-time visitor here this morning, we'd like to welcome you, give you a free complimentary coffee from the van outside. All you need to do is just at the information desk after the service, you can just go to Andrew and you'll fill out a visitor slip and you can get a coupon for a coffee outside. But if, you've, uh, if you're a regular here, maybe have a few surprises this morning. Maybe your seat's not in the same place that it used to be. This building looked completely different last night, so we stacked chairs and tried to get everything ready for this morning. So we do apologize if your, if your chair is moved, or maybe it's good for a change. And then there's some other surprises apart from these beautiful faces on the paintings. There's some other beautiful faces on the stage this morning joining us, Raina and Louise and their team from Friedekloof, Durbanville. So welcome to you guys. Looking forward to worshiping with you. And then I do have a few announcements just before we start worship. Uh, firstly, healing rooms and worship will be on again in September on the 7th, the 14th, and the 21st from 7 or from 6 to 7. Worship in here, healing rooms on the side in the building next door. And that's the first three Thursdays of this month. And anyone's welcome to come if you're sick and you need healing in your body or even if you just want to come for a time of worship with the worship guys in here. And then Garth is starting a study on Ezekiel. So it's going to be a Zoom call-based Bible study. So you're not coming into the building, um, and they're going to work through the book of Ezekiel. So if you want to join them on that, it starts this Tuesday, and it's bright and early, 6.30 till 7.15 a.m., not in the evening, in the morning. And if you want to be a part of that, uh, just speak to Garth, and he'll put you on their group, and you'll get the, the link to join the Zoom calls. And then lastly... Let me just double check. Lastly, yes, the Joy Ministries, they're going on a spring wildflower trip. Um, that'll be Friday, the 15th of September, and they'll leave the church at 10 a.m. in the morning. And um, if you want to go along, you please, please need to RSVP by 10 September. That's next Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, next Sunday. So I'm not too sure you RSVP too. Anyone can? Okay, at the info desk. Thank you. I don't have, the, oh, there it is. So you can RSVP at the info desk and they'll take your name down and hopefully they won't leave you behind when they leave on the day. Okay, you can stand as we pray and enter into worship. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you just for the opportunity to enter into your presence. As brothers and sisters, Father, we thank you for, for Rain and Louise and the team coming to lead us, Lord. And yeah, we just bring our hearts. We come with expectation, Lord. We thank you that among all the inconsistencies of this world, even when the seasons change, Lord, and yeah, things don't always turn out the way we, we wish they would, Lord, we thank you that you are consistent, Lord. We thank you that you are always faithful and we never need a reason to praise you. We always have a reason to praise you because you are good, Father. You are our God. You are loving, merciful, gracious, and kind, Father. And we just invite you into this time as well, Lord, and into our own minds and hearts, Lord. We ask that you would come and transform us this morning. Uh, and that as we worship, that you would be glorified in everything that we do here this morning. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I praise in the valley, I praise on the mountain, I praise when I'm sure, and praise when I'm doubting, I praise when I'm numbered, and praise when surrounded, but praise is the waters, my enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to pray. Still in control. My 
It's the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and possessions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. Yeah, your people sing Holy to the King of Kings Holy you will always be Holy Holy forever Father, in this morning we come 
of all creation, tens and thousands of angels, to worship you, Lord. To sing about your majesty, your greatness, Lord. Declaring that you alone are holy. Merciful and 
Jesus Christ, we love you. And thank you that in that name we are drawn into relationship with the Trinity, with Father, Son, with Holy Spirit. And in that name alone, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, every one of your children this morning, welcomed into the Holy of Holies, into peace, into fullness of joy, into love, Thank you, Jesus Christ, that you are the gate. You are the way, the truth, the life for every one of us to enter into the presence of God, to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit of God in our lives. Peace and life and joy and every kind of goodness. And Thank you, Father God, that your beauty emanates through every one of us, your children, because your Spirit is inside of us. We bless you for this privilege, Jesus Christ. And we love you. We love you, our Lord, our Father, our Savior. And thank you that this morning we enter into unity because of that name. We're part of one family, part of one people all across the earth, across generations, saved unto the Lamb, part of a sea of faces from every tribe and tongue and nation before your throne. Thank you, Father God, for what you join us into, not just now, but for all eternity. To you be glory and honor and praise for every more. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you, I love you, your name is like honey on my lips, your spirit like water to my soul, your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Thank you just for the incredible peace of your presence, Father God. Thank you for the restoration that takes place in your presence. That really all of us are put into alignment, into right standing because of your grace. We praise you for this peace, Lord. To you be the glory. Amen. Welcome this morning, everybody. The place looks a bit different if you haven't been here yesterday. Raina and the team, thank you so much. It's such a joy to have you here. Thank you, thank you. So while I'm saying welcome, can we take up the collection? Thank you very much. Um, so six o'clock yesterday, still there were pallets stacked out and stalls all throughout the back here and all throughout the side over here. Many of you were here yesterday to see that. But just thank you so much for every single hand that took part in the beautiful day that we had. And it really was exactly that. It was a beautiful day with the contributions of everybody that came. And it really was a display of the goodness of God right here in our midst. So thank you so much for everybody that took part. Thank you for all the hands that carried pallets. Uh, Shu and Nick, you have some splinters maybe in there, so many others as well. It really was a joy working side by side to something so special. We're really grateful. And um, before we come to the sermon, just want to explain what's happening up here in the front. Um, some of these faces you, many of us might not even know uh, or remember anymore. Um, so we asked three different artists uh, to make these paintings for us. 
of a representation of this body. It, it was people in this body that's been here for a long time in different kinds of passions and giftings. And we particularly asked three different artists because we wanted three different styles. And what we wanted to represent was that these are different people with different kinds of beauty emanating through them. You know, in the book of Revelations, those stones in the walls of Jerusalem are gems, and the light of God shines through the walls. And because they're all different kinds of stones, we are different kinds of stones. They are different kinds of stones. The glory of God emanates through us in different kinds of ways. It looks different, shining through, same light through a different person. And just thank you so much to the artists. It's Carl and Andrea and Rosalind. You would see Carl and Rosalind's work still displayed there in the foyer. Um, thank you so much for taking part of this project and for what it shows us. It's, it's really a picture of the beauty of God here in our midst. We're really grateful for such gifted people. Let me pray for us, just a thanksgiving for the offering. Father, thank you so much that you give to us. You enable our hands to work for your glory. And to you be the glory, Father God. Thank you so much for just now what we're able to give because you give to us. We love you, Father God. You are gloriously good. And thank you that it's, it's obvious in our midst that you're good to us, that we have a good Father reigning over us. And for the message about to be preached here from the front and all throughout the building with the kids' ministry, we just invite your spirit and say, come and speak through every single one of us speaking and help us hear what is on your heart this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The kids will be leaving us. Thanks so much, guys. Rob says, bend it. Last time I bent it, I broke it. He doesn't know how strong I am, eh? He takes me for granted. <laughs> Can I set something straight? This man is not old. I don't know where you guys heard that. Eh? How dare people say stuff like that, man? Yes, like, I've been in trouble now for two weeks because of that. <laughs> I'm amazed they still let me preach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to the camera, guys. I'm standing in the front here today making it difficult for you. It's just easier with the portraits behind me. Um, I want to start off by reading a, one verse, a very short verse, a statement of Jesus, uh, but in different translations. Uh, and it's going to set the tone for what we're speaking about here this morning. So it is in Luke chapter 17, and the disciples asked Jesus, so, Lord, when will your kingdom be coming, or when will you be coming into your kingdom? Uh, expecting that it is a, a kingdom like the Jewish kingdom before. You know, they were waiting. When are you going to kick Caesar out of the country and all of the Roman soldiers and take over and put things right the way our country should be? That's really what they're asking. And Jesus answered them with something surprising. He says, the kingdom of God is in your midst. You're still waiting for it but the kingdom of God is in your midst. That's in the NIV, New Living Translation. The kingdom of God is already among you. New King James, the kingdom of God is within you. The literal translation, the kingdom of God is inside you. And the CEV says, God's kingdom is here with you. You hear what the verse is hammering in. They were all standing there waiting, where, where? It's here, in you, in your midst, among you, right here. So what does the beautiful kingdom of God look like among us? And it's such a joy standing here again with these pictures around. And I get the privilege not of seeing just these pictures, these faces, but these faces, this moment. This is the kingdom of God in our midst. We're not waiting for it. Will there be a greater fulfillment of it on that day? Yes. But the kingdom of heaven right now, this moment, is breaking in to this place where we stay. It's breaking ground. And I particularly use that verse because in Psalm chapter, whoops, in Psalm chapter 1, 
It says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water. That picture. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prospers. Every single one of these people over many years have been planted in a particular place by God. And they said, all right, God, here I am, and they put their roots in. And over all these years, like any living thing, they kept growing and growing and growing because the moment it stops growing, a tree dies. It cannot just stand still. And over all these years, these people have been growing in Christ-likeness, putting their roots deeper and deeper and deeper in the very place that God has placed them. And praise God for that, because the bunch of them together and people like them in this community have created windbreaks for others like myself to come and be planted in a place where the ground is already being broken by roots already pushing its way in and created safe places for small little trees to continue to grow and grow and grow. Some years ago, I read an article about um, people that asked the question that says, how is it possible that these trees can grow on little islands in the Pacific Ocean where the worst of storms on earth take place? How are these trees not being broken apart, uprooted by these storms? It's strange because they're so exposed out on these little islands. And then sometime later, somebody discovered that the roots of those trees intertwine with one another under the ground. And so in reality, the little forests on these islands are not just one tree standing, is a forest network rooted to an island, which can never be shaken. Blow as you may, the wind can never push them over. As long as every one of those trees decide, I'm going to lock up with this guy and this guy and this guy, then your strength becomes my strength and my strength becomes your strength. And together we stand in the place where God has planted us. We're not just individuals placed in a place to be the light of Christ, to demonstrate the beauty of God. We're a kingdom of God in our midst. Like this verse says, the kingdom of heaven is here. Where? In our midst, in our midst, one Father, one Spirit, one baptism. Peter hammers it in. Christ in all, through all, for the glory of God. We are the demonstration of God in this place where he has placed us. Um, in 2018, I don't know if Devin will even remember it, but the two of us wrote a song together. Never quite, quite got to recording it better than just on my phone. <laughs> but in reading the psalm again, uh, I remembered the song. Uh, and I, I won't be singing it. Yesterday I, I strained my voice. I'll cause Rainer up to sing it for us, eh? You can make up the tune as I go. <laughs> it says, deeper, deeper, deeper still our love will grow. Pour in us your love to overflow. It's your mountain we grow on. Your fountain we drink from, your garden, your glory, planted by the Lord right here, and then the chorus, here we stand. Roots stretched down, going deeper as we take the ground. The forest roof is broadening out. Here we grow side by side, planted by the Lord to thrive. And then the second verse, not just deeper, but wider, wider. Wider still, your love will reach. Greater peace and glory we will see. Our fruit will feed many. Our shade will soothe the city. Our branches welcome the sick, the weary, the weak. And then again the chorus. Here we stand, roots stretch down, going deeper as we take the ground. The forest roof is broadening out. Here we grow, side by side, planted by the Lord right here to thrive. 
It's such a beautiful statement of so many promises that God has given this particular church. Because that's what he's been doing all throughout this time. And praise God for every single one of us planted in this forest of God, in this place. Now, just to get back to that picture of the roots, every one of us are planted, just like those trees on those islands, on something like volcanic rock. Eh? We're not planted in, in tilled ground like grain. We're planted in mountainous areas with rocks because we are surrounded by people with hard hearts, by people who resist the goodness of God, who still haven't yielded to the love of God. And my encouragement to each one of us is that every single one of us are planted in a place where our roots must break ground. We must break ground. That's what trees do. Little shrubs don't do that. Trees break ground. They insist, my roots will reach the deeper water. I will go down. And in that way, I want to encourage you, don't give up. Um, it's about 23 years ago now, Colin and Shirley phoned Fisher Baptist Church. And they said, won't you please send somebody to come and preach in this place? And at that time, there were four people meeting together. And um, Fishuk elders said, all right, we'll send somebody through. And they asked Rob, do you want to go? <laughs> and he said, sure, grabs the opportunity. And as he came through to Malkbos, more regularly after that first meeting, one day the Lord said to him, I'm going to do a great work in Malkbos. Do you want to be a part of it? And praise God, he said yes. And I always think that same invitation has been given to every single one of us over the years. Do you want to be part of the great work I'm doing in Malkbos? Every one of us gets that invitation. Do you want it? Do you want it? And we get to say yes or no. We get to choose. And in that way, Colin and Shirley broke open hard ground right here in Malkbos. Created an opening for God to start working in this place, in a particular part of this community. And not long after that, Patrick and Benita, they know, now stay in Mariasburg, recently moved there. Patrick woke up one morning there in Dassenburg and uh, said to Benita, we need to go to church. And she was quite surprised because they haven't done for years. And she asked him honestly, what, what church? And he was just adamant, I don't want to go to that particular church where we've been, you know. That, let's drive into Malkbos. Let's go and find a place. And they climbed in the car and they drove through. And they came to the police station and they said, listen, any church around here? Silly question, because there are many big ones, but for some reason the police said, yeah, they're next to Van Rubik's Strand, they're in the creche. There's a bunch of people meeting over there. And they came there and they got, became part of their community. And then not long after, Patrick said to Rob, um, you need to come and visit out in our place. And they started making arrangements, picked a day, and then Patrick phoned a bit nervous and said, people out here don't come for, for cake and tea. You're going to have to do a chop and drop. <laughs> and Rob said, that's cool with me. And he rocked up, and he was apparently standing around the fire, catering with the guys. And at some stage, one guy looked up and asked him, so when is this pastor guy coming? <laughs> he said, it's me. <laughs> and then uh, they started a, a life group in Patrick's house. And year after year after year, alpha groups were ran out in, in Dassenburg. And many, many people, still part of this community of ours now, came to know the Lord through that. Because a couple opened a door in a community. Their roots cracked open a crack for the light of Christ to come in. And another part of the surrounding community received the love of God. So in every single way through the years. Not long later, um, Andrew and Belinda joined the church. And in many ways they opened up. They were greatly involved in the youth ministry. Really an anchor for so many things in this church over many years. But I want to highlight one particular one. We were in an elders meeting in one particular day. And uh, there was a conversation around, should we, should we not? We saw the need for a high school in the community. Uh, way before Malkbosai. And um, 
there was faith. Let's start a school. And praise God, he provided the teachers and a small group of kids, and it grew over the years, and that became a massive crack open in the community for the love of God to pour into families year in and year out. And so many kids and parents became part of that school, never leaving the same as they came into that place. Praise God for faith. Willoff and Karen Dreyer, in so many ways, have been a part of this community. All of you will know that. But I want to highlight two particular ones. God said, get involved with Malpo's Care Center. And Karen said, yes. And it transformed the ministry. And a particularly broken part of our community received the love of Christ. Not just once off, but year in and year out and year in and year out. God said to Olaf, get involved in Malpo's private school. And they desperately needed an Olaf at that time as they do now. And God stabilized the school with Olaf getting involved. And families are being ministered to day in and day out. Because of faith, because of obedience, God transforms communities. Monique, <laughs> in so many ways, an anchor in the church. So many ways. But when a particular ministry was started off in the church, deliverance ministry and counseling started picking up, we needed somebody to stand at the open door that was created. And that's Monique. We needed somebody to say, listen, you will see this one, that one, this one. We needed somebody with great discernment to say, what's going to come through the open door today? To give a heads up, to intercede, to pray. And so in every single way, every one of us, in God's particular wisdom, are placed in a particular place in this community. And every one of us have the privilege, but also the hard task to break ground for God's life to stream in. Where are you standing today? Are you discouraged? I want to encourage you. <laughs> Trees just grow this much at a time, this much at a time. It doesn't happen overnight, but one day the stone must break. The cracks must come. As long as we continue to grow in Christ-likeness, transformation will take place. The ground cannot remain the same. Because by God's grace, he empowers the growth inside of us. We've been speaking about beauty all throughout this weekend, and not just speaking about it, but it's been demonstrated throughout this weekend. And um, there's this particular passage in 2 Corinthians uh, that says something so beautiful to me about that. It says, to those who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. I say, why is that beautiful? Because we don't smell like death and doom. <laughs> we smell like that to those who are perishing. They smell themselves. Sounds rough, isn't it? <laughs> but to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. To those who know the love of God, they smell the goodness of God all over us because we're filled with the same spirit. But the powerful thing about that first part of the statement to me is, when we live beautiful lives, we become incredibly offensive to people who do not live beautiful lives. And we don't take it personally. We live according to the way that God ordained us to live. We live the life that God intended for us to live. And those who are not alive on the inside through the grace of God, who haven't grabbed onto the gospel of God yet, who are not filled with the same spirit that we are, are convicted because of the beauty that emanates through us. What's that statement that Jesus says? A city on a hill cannot be hidden. That's us. Lights in darkness cannot be hidden. It is blatantly obvious for everybody around us that we are filled with life, that we are filled with eternal life. So when we raise our kids according to God's ways, it's offensive to a rebellious world. When we live in beautiful marriages like these, year in and year out, loving and respecting and submitting to one another the, God, the way that God intended, godly marriage is offensive to a world 
that does not live according to that. And just the fact that we live according to God's way is a statement that that is not godly. That's not God's intent. When we are in the business place and we live with integrity and we don't go about it with greed and we keep our promises, it is offensive to a world that does not live according to that way. Beauty is a war cry in the world. It's making a powerful statement that the kingdom of heaven has come. It has broken into this place. And we shouldn't be shy about that. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. As I close off with a statement and then hand over to Rob. And I want to read the last verses out of this book that we compiled on beauty. You can, in the foyer, just... Ask over there. There's more copies available if you like. When Paul dresses the Ephesians in the armor of God, he charges them to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. And if they haven't got the gumption yet, he repeats it, saying, stand firm then with a belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Can you hear our Father whispering in your ear this morning? Don't run, my beautiful child. Don't hide. Don't place your light under a bucket. Stand tall where I've placed you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Don't allow yourself to be intimidated into conforming to the pattern of this world. Why would you? You are beloved, my beloved child, in whom I am well pleased. Take heart, for beauty will yet save this world. Father, we give you glory and honor for the fact that through you, you bring salvation into our lives and you bring salvation into this community. Thank you that the beauty through faces like these represented in the front, every one of us have been touched and changed year in and year out. Thank you that you've brought deliverance into our lives, that you've brought truth into our lives. Thank you that you've lifted our legs up when we get tired in our walk. Thank you for every single person growing alongside of us in this kingdom right here in this place. Thank you that you hedge us in behind and before. And just like your scripture says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty to attain, that you would hedge us in with such beautiful people filled with your spirit, filled with your grace, filled with your long suffering with us, (laughs) filled with forgiveness. Thank you, Father God, that you've placed us in a beautiful place in your kingdom right here where we stand. To you be the glory, God. Uh, we're going to go straight into communion but before we do that I am going to stand up probably one of the greatest parts of being in that forest is that um, God puts new plants in and you've heard us ring the bell before so can I have the bell rung? We had, come on, up you get, go and ring your bell again. Um, we had another little seedling put into the kingdom this week. And uh, another one will start its life uh, in, in the ground, and, and hopefully in a ground where, where God will place that seedling, and that that seedling can, can not just grow, but can thrive, and can break ground where they are in whatever they're doing. So we acknowledge, thank you. You can ring it. We acknowledge that. Yeah. We acknowledge that's why we're here. We're here for a world that doesn't want us. Uh, once we were that world. Um, and, and now we get worried because <laughs> we get a little rejected. Um, but as we come and we, we recognize the table, and I'm going to ask the students to come up right now and to begin to serve you. Um, the communion elements, just it is that reminder 
that we're a part of a body. Because Jesus didn't die for one or two people. He died for the sins of the world, and that includes us. But as we come today, whether you are part of this church or not, uh, you're part of the kingdom. We're celebrating the kingdom. We're celebrating the king who was willing to buy us in, to redeem us, to bring us into this place. And so this morning, as you, as you partake, just hold the bread and, and the, the, the juice. Um, just hold it until we can celebrate together as a body. Uh, and we'll, we'll try and get to everybody and we'll ask Rainer if he wouldn't mind leading us with a song during this time of serving. Thanks, Rainer. Heel of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. And look at the wounds that gave me life, grace flowing from his side, no greater sacrifice. And what is done, what is done, all the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, I'll praise God for what He's done, and sing for the freedom He has won, even death is dead and done, His life has overcome. And speak, say the name above all names, over every broken place. He's risen from the grave. What is done? What is done? All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, I praise God for what is done, and what is done, what is done, all the glory and the honor to the Son, my sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, I praise God for what is done, my sins are forgiven, my future is heaven. I praise God for what is done. And I'm not sure if everybody has, if there's anybody who's still waiting. And then I, I need to do what Jesus said we need to do, that we need to remind ourselves with these two elements. We remind ourselves of, of what he's done. That as he, he, he took the bread and broke it, he said, this is symbolic of my body being broken for you. That every pain and every suffering that you may ever have had, everything that you should have carried in your body, I'll carry to the cross for you. And then he took the cup at the end of the meal and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, which has purchased the forgiveness of sins for many. And that is us. And so as we take of this, we remind ourselves that as you drink of it, there is no, there is no, not one sin against your name in the presence of God. You've been washed and you've been cleansed and you're a part of. And so as we, we partake, we, we realize that he has done everything that we need, not only for salvation, but also for life. And he gives us that life in Holy Spirit in us. So let's eat and drink and celebrate 
celebrate the life that we have. as you've celebrated, there's somebody next to you who also celebrated. Would you look at them as a tree in the forest, as a child of God, as part of the same body, that there is a oneness in us, and we've just made that declaration of the oneness that we're together. So just tell them I'm alive. (laughs) And then you can tell them I've been planted. Okay, now tell them where you planted. And let's stand together and sing together as one. And see on the hill of Calvary my savior bled for me my jesus set me free and look at the wounds that give us life grace flowing from his side no greater sacrifice and what he's done what he's done Oh, the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God for what is done. For oh, what is done. What is done. All the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. I praise God for what He's done. Oh, amazing grace. Sweet the sound that said her like me. Oh, I once was loved. Sins are forgiven. My future is seven. I praise God for what He's done. And we all can praise God. We can give a shout of praise. Praise God. Should you want to be prayed for, we would be delighted to pray for you. Uh, You can come up and be prayed. If you want to be prayed for healing prayers, we would ask you to be on that side of the the paintings. If you need to just be prayed for, 
You can come to the middle and we'll be here. And then the Lord bless you and keep you planted where he's placed you for the glory of his name. Amen.